Hey guys, in this tutorial, we take a look at how to create one point perspective using different tools in Anime Studio. So for this video, we are going to create some one point perspective just by using some basic guides. And this video was recorded before Anime Studio 10 came out which is why you're seeing the 9.5 interface. However, this can be transferred from 9.5 to 10 to probably Anime Studio 5 if you really wanted to, because really these are just basic drawing techniques that can be applied to anything, even flash or just drawing on a piece of paper. So we'll be creating some basic perspective that can be the start of a scene. So to get started, what you'll need to do first in your new document is make a new vector layer and we can name this one vanishing point. So we'll just type that out and we'll be good to go. Now this will be one of our guides. The second one, the default layer, we can just double click and rename that to horizon line and then click OK. So for the horizon line layer, let's click on the add point tool, um, click once, hold and shift, click all the way so that you have a straight line. And you can even expand this out further if you want. Let's create a shape so that we have a stroke line now for the horizon. And for the vanishing point, with the add point tool with sharp corners on, you'll want to come towards the line as close as you can here, the horizon line, and draw one line up like so, and then another down like that. Now, we'll create a shape here, and you'll want to make sure, zooming in here, that you're as close as to that horizon line as you can be. And now, if you hold in shift here, with your transform points tool and go back and forth, you can see we can move along the horizon, which is what we want. That vanishing point can then be moved anywhere we wish, but once you have the vanishing point where you want it, because that's important, make a new vector layer. And in this case, we will name this building. Now, we can take the draw shape tool with the rectangle and draw out a rectangle. You can make it any color you wish. Ours is green. And what you'll want to do now to add on to this building is go to your vanishing point layer, click on the transform points tool and just move the line down so that it touches the edge of the rectangle. The same for this one, just like that. So you have that line touching the edge. Now we can add on to the building. So with that building layer selected, we can draw using the guide. So draw a line down, such as seen on the guide, and then go down like this, and then over using the second guide to connect to your building. Now we can create a shape, and we can even change the color of the shape just to give it some volume here. And we can even reduce the line width a little bit. And you can see now, basically, the building is vanishing to the point that we set in the beginning. And pretty simple stuff, as you can see right there, but essential stuff. So let's say we want to add on to the building now. We can create, let's say, a roof. So we'll make a new vector layer and we can name this roof. Now, we can make sure our vanishing points are enabled here. We're just going to come in here and move these guides just a little bit like so, like that. Going back to the building, we'll take the add point tool, come in here and we'll start right about here, draw downward, and then we'll draw up like so, and right about, let's say here, and we can draw down 
and over. Now you'll see we didn't go quite to the edge. That's because there's going to be some overlap. And once you have these lines, make sure they're straight and try to line it up as best as you can with the guides. We will create that shape. So now what you can do is just make sure the color matches that side. And if we want to then add to the other side, we'll just take the add point tool and go this way. Go from that corner and then just go up and down like so. Create that shape and you are good to go. You can see that overlap now occurs with the roof. It seems to go a little bit over the line of the bottom portion of the building which helps with the perspective. So that's a basic building. Now if you hit Control G or Command G if you're on a Mac you can use the grid to make sure everything is lined up and if you're having some issues let's say something's not quite lined up and you're having issues with let's say moving your points around when you are in grid mode uh, where is it? It was I believe under view make sure you disable grid snapping so you don't have the issue of your points grabbing onto different parts of the grid as you are trying to edit your lines. We can see now that looks pretty good. Everything looks straight and good. So let's do something else here. Let's make a new vector layer and we can name this one road. So we'll just type out road, hit enter, vanishing points on, make sure we're on that vanishing point layer, take the transform points tool or translate points tool if you're on an earlier version than 10 and we'll just move the points down like so so that they uh, kinda go off towards the camera. Now on that road layer just follow the guides, draw your lines exactly where the guidelines are here. Now when it goes off the camera you don't have to worry too much exactly how this looks. So we can just kind of go like that, snap everything together, and then we can create our shape. Make sure those points are matched and create the shape. We will use a dark gray color for the fill and hit create shape. So now you have what appears to be a road going off into the distance or coming towards us. We can make yet another layer here and we'll name this one street markings. Make sure we spell it right here. And these will be for instance the lines in the road and what we can do is just move these vanishing points so that they are closer together like this. Now if you're having a hard time seeing these points you can always change the color of the lines and we'll just come in like this and this will require some eyeballing here that looks about right and what we can do then is come in here with the oops we want the uh, add point tool here come in with the add point tool and just follow the guides we'll draw a horizontal line then follow the two guides down and then draw another horizontal line to connect the two points and we can come in here and just adjust this if needed. Looks pretty good. We can then create a shape. We'll make sure that this is white and we can even get rid of the stroke for that. And you can just keep doing this now. We can come down here. You'll have to figure out the spacing yourself. Eh, let's go a little bit further. Horizontal line, come down and then horizontal and back up like that create your shape, remove the stroke and you're good to go. You remove the vanishing point and you can see now what this is starting to look like. And it looks pretty good and you could keep going on like this adding more lines to your road. Again a pretty simple yet effective method in doing so. So now it's a matter of just continuing on and basically just doing more of what you want to do here. We could create, for instance, a second building here if we wanted to. 
So we have the second building made up here. Make sure we actually spell it right. And we can come in here and draw out the second building. Pick a different color. Eh, let's go with dark gray. Come in here, draw that second building out. Adjust your vanishing point. So let's say about like that and like that. And then with the second building layer, just follow the guides. Go like that and then down. Make sure you have a pretty straight line there. Go down and then over and then create your shape. Click Create Shape, and then you can choose a different color for this, like that. So those are the basics of One Point Perspective. Next week, we'll continue to build on this and do some more by creating set pieces and scenes using perspective. If you'd like more tutorials on Anime Studio, Flash, or whatever you want, you can subscribe to the Incredible Tutorials YouTube channel. We are also on Facebook, Twitter, and Google+. My name is Chad Trofgerben. I narrated this tutorial and Jim Mills recorded. Thanks for watching, guys. We hope you learned something, and we'll see you next time.